Hello. Now that we've designed some parts in SOLIDWORKS, I'd like to show you how to export uh, some of our files into a format that we can eventually make 3D models out of. So we have access to two printers, my MakerBot replicator and uh, the Dimension printers in the CAD lab. The Dimension printers are the UPrint and UPrint Plus. Um, what I'd like to show you here is how to uh, use the program, the Replicator G program, as an interface between the models we're going to export in uh, SOLIDWORKS and the models that the Replicator G program is going to import, manage with our guidance, of course, and eventually export to a file format that the 3D printer, my MakerBot replicator, can recognize and eventually print. Now, uh, Dimension, the Dimension printers by Stratasys has a similar program called Catalyst, and it does uh, pretty much the same thing. Now, I tried to in the lab try to install the Replicator G uh, program on the CAD lab, on my CAD lab computer at the instructor's desk. And typically I have a little bit more functionality with my computer than you guys do uh, in regard to the student computers. But even then, with the restrictions put on by CSS, I believe, and you know whatever the problems are, they're just not very friendly computers, I couldn't get it to run. So I like to show you this as a uh, video in class and uh, give you an idea of what it, what it takes to uh, put these together. Now hopefully we can do the Catalyst program in, uh, in the CAD lab too, but uh, my experience on Friday when I tried to play with it, it was really, really slow. You know, so I may not provide a, a good presentation, but at least if I show you how, these, uh, how this program works, and again the Replicator G program that you're going to see here in just a moment, and uh, the Dimension Printer, the Catalyst uh, you know, program, um, they pretty much work the same way. They both have their advantages and disadvantages, but uh, basically, and just in a nutshell, we'll get to this here in a moment, you have your part, you put it on a flatten where the part's going to be built from, and you have the ability to scale it, mirror it, rotate it, move it, and view it in different uh, formats. So, we'll get to that in a minute, but let's start with SOLIDWORKS and go through the process of uh, saving the file in SOLIDWORKS so they can be recognized by the Replicator G program. So I'm going to take my handlebar, this is one of the items I haven't been able to uh, you know, actually print yet, and uh, yeah, that's it. You know, there's no additional uh, work we need to do to this, so we're going to go ahead and save this right away. You need to save it. It's a stereolithography file or an STL, excuse me, an STL file. So what you do is you go to File, Save As, and uh, yeah, we want to maintain the existing references. It really doesn't matter with an STL file, but here is a save uh, as a file type. I don't know if you've ever dug into this, but there are a lot of different ways you can save your file. Step file and I just file. Uh, there's our STL that we have, but we also have eDrawings, which is a viewer that uh, SOLIDWORKS provides for free if you want to show your model to other, uh, you know, other people who may not have SOLIDWORKS, but gives them the ability to rotate the model around and uh, have some you know, functionality, some uh, visual functionality with that. CATIA, JPEG file, DXF file if you're using CNC machining. This might be a good way of doing that too, but let's go up here to STL and we're going to save it as such. I created a folder here for all my STLs, so you can see all the different uh, uh, formats, uh, all the different parts I've already saved from our wagon problem that we did uh, for our exam last week. All of them have been saved as STLs, but I'm going to go ahead and replace the, 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 the handlebar and just going to go to save. So yes, we want to save it over it. And what it does, if you think about the stereolithography file, we can't really um, see this very well right now. But it's asking us about the triangles. What it does is it creates uh, points on our part, and it connects these points on the surfaces of our part with other points that are nearby, and it creates these triangles. Now, we still have our SOLIDWORKS file open here, so you can't really see that. But, if we go ahead and do that again, go to File, Save As, you can actually see some of the triangles if you get really close to it. So again, we're going to go to SDL. Go to our SDL folder and we're going to go ahead and save it and rewrite it again. If we move that out of the way, you can see a lot of triangles, especially on this surface. One triangle over here, one triangle over there on the other side of the handle. You have one over here and uh, it eventually makes a, a real surface to this uh, cylindrical surface back here. And so on and so forth. It's just a, a bunch of triangles and those triangles connected together create a surface body and the surface body, if it's uh, complete, and uh, completely knitted together, it will create a, a solid body after that, and that solid body is something that the Replicator G program can recognize. So yes, we're going to go to yes, and just to make sure, just to make sure a model is complete and correct, 
and it should be because because I made it, but uh, it's not necessarily uh, always a guarantee. We're going to go to open. And it's going to go into our STL uh, folder over here, and I'm going to open up an STL file and pick our handlebar, and then go to open. So now what you're going to get is just a basic, just a basic uh, solid model. I actually calls it a dumb model, a dumb, uh, a dumb solid in a way. Just because there's not a whole lot you can do. And if you look at it really close, you can see triangles in here. And it's uh, nothing more than points connected to other points that create these uh, triangles. And you have hundreds and thousands of these triangles which make up this part. So that's what the STL file looks like. Um, if you go over here to import diagnos the diagnostics, uh, we have no faulty faces, so we're in pretty good shape there. I'm going to go to the green check mark and if you look at your feature manager design tree, which had you know, a dozen different features to it, now only has one feature that you can't really do a whole lot with. So that's a, that's a dumb solid. You can't really do much to it. You can add to it if you wanted to with uh, some additional SOLIDWORKS sketches and features, but you can't do anything with the STL file, and we don't plan on doing anything with it either. So let's go ahead and close that out. We don't want to save it because it'll save it back in the SOLIDWORKS format. And let's bring back our MakerBot Replicator G. So we already have a, our uh, wagon wheel mount. We're going to open up our handle, our handlebars. So we're going to go to File. We're going to go to Open. And we're going to go look in our STL folder. And what we want to do is we want to open up an STL uh, a model, make uh, modifications to it, uh, scale it, which we're going to do to one eighth scale, and do some other things to it. Not a whole lot. But now we're going to save it as an S. Um, as a G-code file and eventually as an SG3 file. I believe that's, uh, that's uh, the file format. But anyways, let's go ahead and uh, open it up. We're going to go to Handlebar STL and go to Open. And there's our handle. So if we scoot out, we can see our handle. Now what it does is it gives us the volume, our build volume in here. And we want to be able to build our handle in there. So if we scoot out a little bit more, you can see that it's uh, really big there. So I think the first thing we want to do is go to Scale. You can go to view, you can view it from different views if you wanted to do. You can move it, rotate it, mirror it, and scale it. We're going to go ahead and scale it first. So we're going to scale it down to 1 eighth its size, so 0.125. And you can't press the enter key like you can as a shortcut key for SOLIDWORKS, but you do have to go up here to the scale button and scale it. So let's go ahead and move it, put it on platform, and center it. So now our models are right in the middle, right in the center. And that's probably not the orientation we want to build it. The last time I built this, uh, I built it a horizontal like this, and it didn't like this. This is a, kind of a very thin feature, and, and uh, when the MakerBot Replicator uh, prints this, you know, it only has maybe about uh, maybe 20, 24 uh, strands of uh, filament that are in this, and it didn't come out with the resolution I would have liked. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this so that the handle is mostly up and down. So I'm going to go to the Rotate button, I can rotate about the X, Y, or Z axis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the curve part on the bottom. So that looks like it's in pretty good shape if I uh, uh, rotate on the X axis. And I'm going to go back to the Move button. I'm going to put on Platform and I'm going to center it. So the desire here is it's going to build some support material along with this part on the bottom up here. So it'll help support this vertical piece here, and hopefully we'll have some build material over here that will keep it from flopping over. Something this thin, building like this, may not build correctly. A lot of this, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff when you're printing out in 3D it takes a little bit of iteration in order to get a pretty good idea of what the capabilities of the printer can, you know, accomplish. What its capabilities are. For instance, like with, um, you know, the 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 thickness of our of the wall of our uh, wagon was way too thin. It was about the half the size of the resolution of um, of one of the beads of uh, plastic, the ABS plastic gets, that gets extruded out of the out of the printer, and having a single bead of material out there to represent the shell of the wagon, the you know the you know the surface wall of the wagon uh, really wasn't enough. So what it is, I increased the thickness of that by a factor of about ten. So I made it uh, you know much thicker than that. It actually resolved itself better. So that's part of the iterative process here. You need to make sure that. Uh, you do a little bit of give and take in order to uh, make sure, ensure that the models you're trying to print out actually are able to print out and you get a, a decent result out of it. So, that looks like it's in pretty good shape. I'm taking my middle uh, mouse button to be able to rotate that and take a look at it from different views. 
the next uh, option here is to go ahead and save it. Now there's a couple different options up here just below our menu pull down, our pull down menu. We have the ability to uh, start that model uh, if the, the, the printer were connected and it's not connected now and it won't be connected in the lab because we don't have a uh, computer connected to. It's difficult to make uh, changes in the, in the CAD lab and uh, especially connections. But if your uh, computer was connected to, uh, you know, to the printer, then you can go ahead and press that button. Go ahead and uh, generate that. And you can also build from uh, you know, the SG, S, SD card that's uh, on the, perhaps part of the printer, too. So there's a slot in the printer that we're going to put that SD card in and we're going to be able to print from. So if you want to go to that card, if it's already mounted in there, you can initiate a print command by going to that. Uh, once we have our G code, we can do an SG s3g file, I said s3d file before, but it's s3g file. Once you get the G code uh, printed, uh, this would be the next button to print, and that would actually save it to the SD card. This creates a G code. The G code, if you're familiar with uh, CNC machining, if you're taking Mastercam uh, from Dr. Catton, from Mr. Catton, from Professor Catton, um, it's very similar to that. So, in a sense, uh, what it's doing is it's putting that that nozzle that extrudes that plastic in a very specific location at a, at a certain time in order to extrude that plastic. So it's a very similar process as you would set up a CNC machine. And once the, once the printer is connected, you can pause it, you can stop it, you can uh, you know check uh, the manual controls of the machine if you want to do it, if you want to jog it or maybe center the print head, stuff like that. You can restart the firmware on the machine if you want to do that. Do that. It's like turn it off and on if you want to do that. You can connect the machine if it's uh, hardwired, or you can disconnect it. And then uh, we have uh, additional options over here if you want to do that. So, next step over here is to create the G code. This might take a few minutes, and uh, if so, we'll go ahead and come back to this. But uh, it's asking here, especially since we've already scaled this down, whether you want to save it. And yes, we want to overwrite our old STL file with the new smaller STL file. We're going to go to yes. So now it's thinking. It gives us some additional options options in here. Use wrap support. The wrap support is that uh, element that's in the bottom. It kind of creates a wrap that uh, you know our uh, model will print on. Um, you could uh, have uh, a various amounts of uh, support. As I mentioned before, what I wanted to do is uh, be able to build support up the side here, so that we, when it's building up this handle, that it doesn't collapse in us. So I'm going to go ahead and use full support. Exterior support only. Uh, we can do that or we do no support. I don't think no support would be a, a good option here because because this is molten plastic in a warm environment it doesn't really fully solidify until it really gets back to room temperature. So we're going to do full support. Uh, use default and G code and that's fine. You can make modifications to the G code too. Once you're all done you can go from the model of the G code and back again if you want to make specific changes to the G code. And use Printomatic uh, stepper extruders only. And yes, that's what we have. So settings. We're going to keep all the default settings here, but this is something you might want to keep an eye on if you've got a really bulky, uh, you know, cubic uh, sort of element here. You may not want to have 100% full um, infill on it. You might want to have like 10% or 20%. I don't think it would go below 10%, but what it does in a, in a large object like that is it'll print out in, um, in a honeycomb shape on the inside. In order to provide the support from top to bottom and uh, side to side, you've got to produce that honeycomb structure inside. Uh, layer height, we're going to keep with the defaults in that. Number of shells, we're going to keep one shell in this. We don't need any additional shells, but if you have a large square in here, now I'm going to break that into a number of different floors in that shell in order to support that honeycomb. Feed rate, we're going to stick with uh, the default feed rate, but that's something, if you get more experience in this thing, you might want to, uh, you know, have a faster feed rate or a slower feed rate depending on whether you get an adequate amount of, uh, of material extruding out or whether it's too much. Travel feed rate we're going to keep that the same and uh, print temperature we can change that here too. 225 has been uh, you know been something I've been using I think I upgraded that from 220 so that seems to work out pretty well. I noticed that going up to 230 was just a little bit too much and it actually charred uh, you know started charring plastic and started uh, plugging up the extruder so there's a narrow window in there with a lot of these tolerances. So, let's go ahead and generate G-code. You are now slicing with accelerated build speeds. Do not print files generated at these speeds unless you can have accelerated turned on. Now, I just downloaded my replicator 4.0. I was using 3.7 before that. 
but I think it's probably okay. I haven't seen this message before, but I'm going to go ahead and stick with it for the for the default settings. So this takes a little bit of time. And this might be a good time to go ahead and conclude this video. So we will pick this up next time. But anyways, before I do that, by the way, it tells you the total progress down here. You know, it's got a uh, a specific element progress up here. And by the time this green bar gets all the way over to the right hand side, we will be done.